Hey guys, this is Dorian Day and this is my new series, Serum Superiority. Today is a big day for electronic music and sound design. Steve Duda of Extra Records has released a new generation of synthesizer combining the best aspects of many of today's most popular and well-known synthesizers. I believe we'll look back at the launch of Serum as the beginning of a new era in electronic dance music, breathing new life into the art form, just as Silent and Massive did for dubstep and trance nearly a decade ago. With that in mind, I'm beginning this series to take a serious in-depth look at the technical aspects of Serum and to compare them to other popular synths in wide use. While I do hope to prove Serum is the superior one-size-fits-all synth, this is an ongoing investigation that I hope others will contribute to. My knowledge of the technical aspects of synthesis is elementary at best, so please challenge my assessments to the best of your abilities. So two things led me to start this series. First, over the time that I've been producing music, I've probably assessed and read the manuals of about 12 synthesizers and tried to, at the very least, understand their signal flow and architectures to the best of my abilities. I'm certainly not a pro at designing sounds in all of the synthesizers, but I've tried to catalog and understand the different ways that they work and why we might consider one synthesizer to be different from another. The second thing that led to this series is this picture right here that Steve Duda retweeted on August 28th. And you can see that it's a spectrum analysis of three different synthesizers, the top looking like it's massive, the middle probably silent, and then finally we have Serum. And you'll notice right here the highest peak, the fundamental frequency of this note playing, um, has all of its harmonics going forward. I believe that this is a saw wave. But you can see that on the top two synthesizers that we have harmonics going backwards. Um, this is what I'm calling sub-fundamental aliasing. Uh, I have no idea how it comes about or how it works. However, I have noticed that on some synthesizers you see noise below the sub-fundamental, um, just on pure tones. I was never quite sure what that was from or if it was bad. But now seeing this picture um, from Serum, we can see that it's at least something to be paying attention to. It's hard to know whether it's good or bad without more assessment, but for at least um, our purposes, we can use it as a way to make assessments about the synthesizers that we use every day. So right here we have um, an Ableton project open, and I have uh, audio files here from, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten of the more popular synthesizers available today. Now, what I did for this experiment, as I'm going to call it, is uh, I set an eight bar MIDI clip on each one of these synthesizers at C3. Um, I set all of the synthesizers to an init saw patch, which was pretty much a single oscillator saw wave, no unison detuning, anything. And I attempted to turn the uh, filters off on all of the synthesizers that allowed it. Um, I think Lush is the only one where I couldn't bypass the filter as far as I could see. So, so yeah, all of these are pretty much the ba same basic saw waveform out of each one of these synthesizers. And we're going to go ahead and listen to each one individually. Oh, also, I forgot to mention that I normalized them in um, Wave Editor. Um, and we'll actually look at the waveforms because they're quite interesting and brings up other topics for analysis. But let's give them a listen first. So here's Serum. <laughs> Now silent, strobe, synth master, spire, lush, ace, diva, zebra two, and massive. And there you go, that's their uh, slight phasing. Anyways, so they all roughly sound the same, at least in my ears. Some are slightly brighter, some slightly buzzier, but overall pretty close to one another. Um, so where, are, where do the differences lie? Well, the first thing you'll notice is that a number of the synthesizers have a sort of bias towards one uh, phase or another, either the positive or negative. You see here there's a bias towards the negative phase of the waveform. We have a lot of headroom at the top, but none at the bottom. Ace has this reversed, lots of headroom at the bottom, very little at the top. Diva, Zebra, 
is pretty um, using pretty much the whole bandwidth. Massive as well. The uh, one thing that I can notice, first of all, between the um, synthesizers that have this um, biasing towards one phase direction or another is that they're typically thought of, of as like analog modeling synths. Like Massive is largely considered a wavetable digital synthesizer. Zebra, once again, mostly a digital synthesizer. Diva, our first analog uh, modeling synth. Ace, same deal. Lush as well, modeling the uh, SH-101. Um, Spire, while I think of it as more of a digital synth, has a little bit of this phase offset. And Synth Master, a lot. However, this waveform, I am pretty confident, uh, is exported from a, uh, an analog synth because Synth Master has um, a lot of almost like sample like waveform options similar to Serum, but not quite at the same level of sophistication. Strobe, another analog modeling synth. Silent, I thought was an analog model to synth, or I mean it is, but I think you have to turn on the warm drive uh, to get more of that action going. So that's not hugely important, but it uh, does show you some minor differences between the different synthesizers, which are similar and which are different based on sound and look of waveform. However, the most interesting thing is when we look at the spectrum analyzer, much as we saw in this picture here. So I have some spec analyzers up and the most important thing to note is that I changed the range right here so that it would always um, basically show me the full, full, full scale broadband or uh, yeah, full scale of the spectrum analyzer, which will go down very far, but uh, the dynamic range of most 24 bit audio files, I believe is 144. So even though we're working in 32 bits, we're not likely to have much information down there. So now let's give the spectrum analyzers a look. Uh, you can see on Serum that below the fundamental frequency, we have little to no noise. It's a very smooth sloping curve that goes down to negative 114 decibels and just stays around there and bounces. If you look at Silent, you'll see already that we have what I'm calling sub harmonic or sub fundamental aliasing. Some kind of reflections um, beneath the the main fundamental that I'm I'm not thinking serve any kind of purpose. Strobe, same deal. Lots of noise, bouncing. Wow, well, not quite as many reflections as Silent, which has at least two, but still some oddities going on. Synthmaster. Same deal, even more. And actually, at near the DC offset, uh, as it approaches zero hertz, we have a e pretty high amount of energy. We're, we go to negative 90 decibels, whereas Serum, we stay pretty consistently at negative 114. Spire. Huge amounts of low information. Lush also has uh, subharmonic aliasing present. Um, however, it does appear as if when it is at its lowest point, it is lower than that of Serum, which once again is about negative 114. Let's check out Ace. Same deal, it's odd bouncing, harmonics popping in and out, or at least that's what it perceives to be to me. I perceive it to be. Same deal with Diva. Zebra 2 has some of the least right here. And then Massive, which I forgot the spec. Massive is unfortunately a much shorter loop due to some technical problems, so it's bouncing around quite a bit. But you can see it starting to pop up. Now, is this good or bad? Well, I'm not so sure. 
Some people might say that you could just use a high pass and get rid of all of this noise. However, unless you're using a uh, unless you're using a zero phase equalizer or filter, you're going to change the uh, the phase of your your sound at least a little bit, which can have a drastic effect on the overall sound, especially if you're filtering the low frequencies. I mean, to test this out, go take a bass or a kick and start slowly filtering from negative zero hertz up towards 200 and you'll notice a, a pretty distinct change in the quality of the sound and that's the what i believe to be the uh, phase shifting or distortion or coloration that's associated with uh, non-linear um, filters and equalizers so perhaps you could clear out this noise with a filter um, and you would get a wave or a, a result that was very similar to serums. However, you're gonna, you have to add an additional process. And once again, uh, I don't really have a super technical understanding of this. So hoping someone can enlighten us as to why this would be bad in general. However, I did notice something else, which was even more curious to me than the subharmonic analysis. And that's the, once again, what I termed a non-harmonic distortion. So this is a saw wave, and for anyone who is not familiar with the uh, harmonics of a saw wave, it's every even and odd fundamental, um, no, every even and odd partial or harmonic from the fundamental to infinity. And what that means is that, let's say you take a sine wave at C3, then we have C3 times 1, C3 times 2, which is C4, C3 times 5, which is G4, C3 times 6, which is, or 5, which is C5. Um, yeah, so if you want to know more about that, just Google partials or harmonics. Um, but what's important to know is that a saw wave has all of the even and odd ones. Um, and you, and why is that important? Well, it's important because theoretically, if a signal is, is quote unquote clean, then there shouldn't be any information between the harmonics. Uh, I mean, in my mind, that would be a level of definition of purity. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, non-integer harmonics create dissonance and um, generally lead to metallic and unpleasant sounds. If you open up FMA and you modulate a carrier with a non-integer uh, um, modulator, you're going to hear metallic sounds. And it's a very similar principle here, I believe. So what, once again, we can see a very smooth, no information distortion in between the harmonics here. But if we go to Silent, let's see, Silent, all of a sudden you start seeing this information in between the harmonics. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'm assuming it's some form of distortion or once again aliasing, but it's non-harmonic. It is not related musically. And I suppose whether or not that's good or bad is a, a personal preference. But at the very least, this I believe this to be the definition of distortion. So there is distortion inherently in the signal in silence. So if we go over from silence to strobe, you'll see these other harmonics popping up between the, uh, the integer harmonics. So once again, because this is C3 and this is C4, this is the fundamental and this is the first harmonic. So this is a non-integer harmonic that is being added into the signal, I, I assume by default. Um, not There are no effects applied as far as I could tell. I turned everything I knew off in strobe, yet this still results. Um, not exact, I'm not at all clear on how or why this happens. Synth master even worse in between, and you're starting to see it popping up even closer. Spire, um, sort of in between strobe and silent, not as bad. Almost as getting closer to serum, but this low end nonsense is killing it. All right, lush 101. You can see here, once again, all this peaking, weird clutter. And if, once again, for a perspective, go to Serum. I mean, they're beautiful. They're just perf pretty much perfect bouncing sine waves or parabolas. Ace, same deal. Diva, tons of it.
some better and then a lot in massive now I um, if anyone knows anything about this um, and is watching please help me understand the difference or some causes of why it seems like the aliasing or harmonic distortion here is at a, a much higher frequency because you see many more peaks in these, this region. Yeah, like right here. You see tons of peaks here, but if you go to silent, or I mean strobe, there's just the one. So that's a curiosity I have. Anyways, I think that brings us to the end of Serum Superiority 1. Um, once again, this is meant to open a dialogue about the technical benefits or aspects or anything pretty nerdy about synthesizers, um, sort of with Serum at the center. Uh, I'm going to be making the assessment of all these other synthesizers in terms of the tools and things that Serum can do. Um, if you're interested in chatting or being involved in starting the Serum community, which I hope to help do, I started an IRC channel. You can find it in the uh, description of the YouTube video when it posts. All right. Thank you very much.